Welcome back to another episode of Organic Chemistry. I'm That Chemist, and today we have a special guest. Hello. Good day. Yes, it's me, Tom. Welcome, Thank to, the, you. welcome to the channel. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be ranking energetic compounds, and we have a special list. So if we go to the next slide here, we can see that we're going to be ranking compounds based on how energetic they are as well as how much street cred they have. So some of these, you know, they'll have a special place in your heart. Maybe you think that there's some that should be on here that we're not including, you can let us know down below. And without further ado, let's get started. So maybe you want to start with one, Tom. Would you like to talk about S4N4 potentially? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, obviously this is one I've got to be grudge against, um, but you can't deny it's an excellent molecule. It's pretty cool. I, like it's, it's, it, it's, it's drawn as a ring here, but it's it's more of a like a crown, I guess you'd call it. Puckered. Because it's kind of got that staggered ring, right, sort of thing. Yep. So it's it is really it's really excellent, and and I don't think it's that terrible and explosive. I think I did a terrible job of making it as per usual. Fair enough. Um. So I don't know. I I think this one is definitely C tier. C tier. Because it's 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 nice, but it's not it's not that good, and it's like sort of the epitome of of the yellow grudge that I hold. Of course, I think all yellow chemistry. But is I trash. think there's going to be, yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of these compounds <laughs> I have a grudge against just for their color, so I better not mention that too many times. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's fair enough. Yeah, you know, you can be racist against molecules as long as they're not people, right? And, you know, some that people is, will think this is a bit I too think... harsh. To put this in C tier, but you have to remember, <laughs> there's some pretty nasty ones on here. Yeah, yeah, and hey, we can we can move it later. Not that yep, I think fair. I will, but <laughs> you can just delay some decisions for sure. A bit later. So, as a fluorine chemist, why don't I pick off a couple of fluorine ones here? So, this molecule here, dioxygen difluoride, commonly known as FUF, is called FUF because of the sound it makes. It's extremely unstable. At low temperatures, it detonates, I think, far below 100 degrees, minus 100 degrees Celsius. And, you know, most people are pretty terrified to work with it. It doesn't really have any practical applications, but it's pretty cool. So, you know, it's got some street cred. I think it at least belongs in B tier. Maybe we would put it in A tier later on, depending on what you think. What do you think, Tom? I, I think B tier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we've got to be harsh here, you know, because the good ones really got to stand out. Yeah, for sure. I think I think it's good to 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 put ones in it in their place. I'll go for one more fluorine <laughs> one. Really... So yeah. this one here, this is a xenon compound. It's xenon bis trifluoroacetate. So these are typically referred to as xenon esters. And while things like xenon difluoride tend to be relatively stable, these things you should never ever isolate. And the reason for that is they <laughs> will form radicals as well as two equivalents of CO two gas and xenon. So these things are pretty terrifying. Now, they're not like high explosives to my knowledge, but I know xenon compounds when they've been isolated in the past have like caused Neil Bartlett and his researchers to lose vision permanently and uh, temporarily in the other case. But this is still a pretty spooky compound and it's got xenon in it. I mean, how cool is xenon, right? So. Yeah, that's straight cred for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to do another one like HMX? HMX, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a good explosive, uh, secondary, um, is it, I mean, are you, are you in charge of street cred? You're the, the official chemist here. You know, are you, are you able to look at a molecule and tell me if it's got street cred or not? Uh, you know, I mean, what, it's what how cool it is. I mean, like pretty business oriented people, you know, military people made those ones. Right. So, I mean, that doesn't look too yeah. cool to me. Like it's still cool in terms of having an N nitro. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but <laughs> military oriented people i like that <laughs> well i don't know what are you gonna call I identify as i identify as military oriented <laughs> um it's it's good um yeah no i i agree it's it's um i guess it comes with with rdx yeah. rdx i mean rdx looks nicer because you've got the the six ring and I, I always think of hmx as just sort of like uh uh you know an, a distorted version of its brother yeah. rdx um and you, it's more difficult to make for for what you know it's, it's it's slightly better but i don't think it justifies you know its use so i reckon rdx gets c tier and hmx gets d tier i think that's fair yeah no oh, 
Yeah, okay. Nah, I'll stick with it. I'll stick with it. Okay, do you yeah. want to also do CL20 while we're on the N Nitro yeah, compounds? Yeah, yeah. Surely that's that's got to be S tier, right? Oh, yeah? Like, it's pretty cool looking. You, I mean, you probably don't want this pointed out, but you mentioned that it's one of the only ones you couldn't successfully draw in chem draw. Oh, true. Because of its shape. Yeah. Right? Sh- like, that's street cred. Oh, for sure. Right? As soon as you've got, like, a cage molecule or anything like that, um and and you know the name like cl20 you know that's a that's a street name you know oh that's, totally that's got that's got cred so, <laughs> that's good explosive too good explosive so so you know s tier absolutely the only cooler thing with the name cl20 would be if you could make a ring of 20 chlorine atoms that would get my vote but this is still pretty yeah cool. yeah 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 it's it's like cl20 and it's got like not any chlorine in it yeah which is just it's it's fantastic it's a misnomer <laughs> it's like how they call acid acid yeah, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't have an acid yeah all right yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so i'll do a couple hypervalent iodine ones so we'll start with ibx ibx is used as an oxidant in organic chemistry typically converts alcohols to aldehydes and ketones it had a bad rap because people said it was explosive, but the way that they made this was originally they used uh, bromate in the synthesis and bromates are notoriously explosive. So this is actually not that explosive. So it gets to go right to F tier. Similar thing with Tony Ooh. reagent. Have you heard of Tony reagent before Tom? Tony reagent. No, you could have just made that up. And I <laughs> Fair <enough. laughs> like, Oh, this is a Tony reagent. Yeah. yeah. Most people will refer to this as Togni, but uh, it's a Swiss a Swiss chemist named Tony, uh, T O G N T O G N I, and uh, this is an oh, electrophilic. Okay. No, that that yeah, that makes it more more chemistry orientated. Oh, for sure, it like that. Yeah, I that mean, makes more sense. I would give it street cred as a chemical, but because this one's also not explosive, I'm going to put this one in F tier as well. Plus, there's fluorine in it, so it should go in F tier. Um, not explosive. <laughs> the there's this one paper that reports that this is like a really unstable shock sensitive compound, but they had like really impure stuff. It was like eighty percent pure, so there's no surprise there that they have issues. Okay, why don't you tell us about HMTD? <laughs> yeah, I mean, once again, it's another cage. Okay, that's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's like in three D. It's it looks pretty good. It looks pretty janky in in two D. Oh yeah. But you know, it's got it's got a cage there, and and it's not a very big cage, and the bridging um, peroxide groups are really quite threatening. Oh yeah. So, three peroxides um, in one molecule. Yeah, it feels it feels illegal to put this like in a high tier. <laughs> but, uh, that I mean, that's never stopped me before. So I think a B tier. B tier. Potentially. Fair. Because I mean, street cred. It's it, it's it's not like likable street cred. It's more the uh, street cred. Yeah. If I I'm really pushing the limit of what street cred is. I'm not really sure what street cred is, um, but I think HMTD is B tier. In conclusion, I, I I think I agree. You want to also tell us about <laughs> this one here, Fox Seven? You just knew so many of these Fox off the top of your head. I'm like, I've never even heard of Fox Seven before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's fantastic. Um uh very yellow once again of course um pretty pretty insensitive it, it is cool it's it's because it's kind of a small molecule yeah in a sense i mean it's got it's got a lot of nitrogen and oxygen hanging off it but it it, it is cool that it's just kind of a, a pretty good explosive um, and one that you know would see he's probably seen quite a bit of military use interesting um despite being despite being a bit expensive um uh, and but it's but it's not it's not some sort of crazy, uh, you know, um, tetrazole thing or anything like that. Like it's it was invented it's pretty simple, somewhat somewhat recently, but it's still simple. So it kind of gives you hope that um, there are other simple ones out there, but probably not. Totally. But yeah. So so A tier. A tier for Fox Seven. There you Despite go. being very yellow. Yeah. There you go. It's, you know, if it was just slightly more yellow, I think we'd put it in B tier so it matches. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it could be any more yellow than it is. It's pretty, like, peak yellow. Oh, really? But Dang. Yeah, it's, it's probably stopping it getting S tier, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the colors, cool. yeah, we're going to be a little bit bigoted the here colors, because it's yellow. It's not yeah, going absolutely. in S tier. <laughs> yeah. Right on. So acetylene, it's, acetylene doesn't have much street cred. You know, you hear about welders, like, making balloons full of acetylene and like blowing them up behind people because they think it's funny it's got some street cred in that sense but it's more got like a bad reputation 
Now, I I have permanent tinnitus from an acetylene explosion that was done in my undergrad. So, you know, I I don't have warm feelings for acetylene. I don't know. How do you feel about acetylene, Tom? Uh, I, I mean, same. I mean, you, you, you think it's very easy to get a hold of and you're like, well, I'll just fill up a balloon and set fire to it. And then you realize about three milliseconds after doing that, that it actually is pretty serious stuff. For sure. (laughs) People in the discord had showed me all these Europeans filling cannons with acetylene and doing these massive explosions. And it's just like wrecking the windows of all of the houses around where they do it. So it's got, it's got game. (laughs) It's got shockwave at least to it. It's It's got game for sure. I mean, acetylene starts with A, so I think it's going to have to go in A tier. Maybe we'll put it in A-tier, B tier, yep. but I mean, it starts with an A, so how could we not, right? That's, that's as good a justification as any, yeah, I think. fair enough. Uh, I'll do nitroglycerin. So nitroglycerin is yeah. the reason Alfred Nobel has a prize named after him. You know, it's been useful in, for blowing up a lot of stuff. I think it has the most street cred for that reason, because it's blown stuff up so we could make streets. I mean, easy S tier. <laughs> Easy S tier. I think so. No, nah, I mean, over, overrated. Overrated? What do you overrated. think? Overrated. A, A, A tier. A I'll tier? compromise A tier with you. Okay. Yeah. It's so accessible to the, I mean, the amateur, though. It It is, but that doesn't mean it's good. There's a lot of better at, um, True. ones. And, and, and Dynamite worked. I mean, it's... it's it works. It's... They didn't have anything better at the time. But... Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If you disagree, just, you can comment down below. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I would be. I mean, yeah, maybe it's just you're the man, so you know, you know what's cool here. It. That's, I mean, no, I'm, I'm not a good judge on what's better than cool I am. Here. I've yeah, accidentally made anyway. some that were dangerous, but hey, okay, why don't you tell us about <laughs> octronitro cubane? All right, I mean, absolutely S tier as well. It's pretty awesome. It's a cube. It's it's a cube. Uh, its explosive properties, I mean, have definitely been talked about a lot. Um, have they ever actually been experimentally demonstrated? I don't think so. So, a lot of a lot of this stuff comes from you can you can do computational stuff to kind of work out the depth velocity and right. pressure and um, and those are kind of your main factors. And that comes from computation and the one sort of factor you need to input that is your is your packing density so you need a crystal structure okay so you need to you need to make it and then you get a crystal structure and then you can input that sort of data into your computation and then you get results whether those results match up experimentally i mean they rarely do perfectly um and quite often they will overstate it because i mean who's going to argue with you if you say it's got a detonation velocity of 10 kilometers per second exactly you know who's going to make who's going to make it and then you know pour time into it and then work out it's going to be oh it's actually 9.5 yeah Um, but there is a a lot of there's a lot of other impact uh, a lot of other experimental variables that change those parameters um like how how um how it presses and and what volume you press it in and and diameter and everything like that so um, I always like to see, I mean, lots of people obviously like to see experimental values, um, but you need to, you need to make kilos of the stuff to get those, get good sense of those values. Yeah. And it's pretty hard um, to so, get kilos of cubanes in general. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, you can get kilos of cubanes now, okay, okay. but you can't, you can't get kilos of, uh, octonitro cubane. It's still, it's still very hard <laughs> yeah. to get get from cubane to the octonitro cubane uh, like half a lot the of the battle steps. yeah yeah it's 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 a lot i mean because cubanes are commercially available now but you you i mean a lot of the steps go through ex- really really sensitive like intermediate steps which is fine if you're doing like milligram scales and you're like oh we just made isolated this azide intermediate and hey you know but but you can't you can't scale that so anyway so yeah, it's good. No, it's one good day point. we'll get experimental values, and it might turn out to be terrible. But for now, we just have to believe it's it's good. It's actually pretty crazy to think that they make any of these on scale, isn't it? Hey, like you think about making a little bit, yeah. and you're like scared. But man, making a kilo of any of this, yikes! Yeah, but but you have to. I mean, I mean, you talk to people like real, uh, you know, explosives people, and they're like, "Well, TNT doesn't reach its potential until four kilos." Right? Yeah, like, fair it enough. Doesn't, 
he doesn't reach its proper speeds and everything like that. Uh, you know, at, at three kilos, like you gotta you gotta really press it and and do the proper casing and and diameter and everything at kilo scale to get proper stuff. Interesting. Which is embarrassing when I when I come you know and I'm like oh here's, here's ten milligrams, but that's why I deal with primaries and not secondaries. <laughs> and not secondaries because I yeah. just can't, <laughs> I'm not gonna clear my neighborhood just to <laughs> just to properly properly get TNT to, to good speeds. Yeah. And speaking of which, we should do TNT. Yeah, though, perfect. I guess. So TNT, you know, it's in Minecraft, so that's pretty cool. But uh, you know, we have kind of <laughs> exceeded TNT in terms of our capabilities. I mean, it's pretty cool still. You know, it's in shows like MacGyver. I probably think putting TNT too high would be you know misjudgment on my part. I would probably put TNT in D tier. What do you think, Tom? D tier. D tier. I mean, it's fair enough. You would like it, it. It is. It's. It's nice to think that we've exceeded it. Um, but like the amount of TNT that's used still. I mean, it's still like the biggest military explosive. In, 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 TNT equivalent megatons. Tons. Yeah. Yeah. We. I mean, we manufactured tons of it, right? Yeah. Like globally. Like it's just. And and what for? I mean, for reasons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like, but I don't. I still don't think its actual use outstrips demand. But um, we keep stockpiling it because yeah, you got to have it. So but anyway, I think so. I think D tier, it's fine. D tier is fine. I, I mean, it's not. It, I think that's fair. it's useful, but but yeah. Yeah, I think picric acid similar. I think it's slightly worse than TNT though. I think it probably belongs in E tier. Would you agree? Yeah, it's it, it's it's a, it's a slightly better explosive just from like theoretical from oxygen content. point of view. Yeah, and like speed, I I believe, but like handling and everything is it's much worse. I mean, the TNT you can melt cast, which is fantastic. Yeah, and is the reason why it's so popular. Picric acid, you can't melt cast, and also it's like very acidic. Oh, that's and right. Yeah, the salts are very explosive, and so you can't like just dump it in a metal casing and call it fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's. I mean, I didn't really like it too. Once again, very yellow. It's, of it's named. It's named after the. Um, I think the Greek word for bitter. That's right. Or something that's right. like that, because it's extremely bitter. And you get this thing. You see it sometimes on amateur forums. If you if you burn some picric acid, and then it, it generates a smoke. Okay. Or whatever. Like you, you expect it to completely burn, but then you go back into a room that you've burnt picric acid in, and you're like, you can you can really taste it. Really? You know? Oh, weird. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, oh fuck. You know, you get this picric acid taste and. It's not, it's not, you're not like eating grams of it, but like, Still. it's so intensely bitter. You're like, yeah, so never have I had such a bitter fucking smoke. So, Interesting. <laughs> and you're like, I should not, I should not be in this room yeah. right now. So it's, it's always nice when a chemical like alerts you to yeah. the fact that it's I'm dangerous. Your body. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hey, you, you're not meant to eat me. And it's true. You're really not meant to eat it. Plus he made this one in a lab. So you, you know. Yeah, Usually. yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like you want to eat it. Yeah, but it's nice. It's nice that it just doesn't taste good or something like that, because that would be really fucked up. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> why don't so we I think do... e-, e tier is good. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah right on. So benzotriazole, uh, you sometimes hear about these as being like potentially explosive, but the parent one's actually like pretty sucky. Like it does release a lot of energy when it's combusted, but it isn't like formally an explosive. And so sometimes people get overhyped about how dangerous certain motifs are. So this one's kind of lame. I think it also has like no street cred. Like, look at it. It's just like a derpy version of naphthalene. <laughs> F tier. You yeah. want to do... Ammonium nitrate, F yeah. tier. F tier ammonium nitrate. No, no, not cool. And I mean... Come on, get some carbon. There was that, uh, there was that recent explosion. Uh, where, where was that explosion of all the ammonium nitrate? Um, uh, in, in, um, Lebanon. Lebanon. That's right. And so, uh, you know, in respect, we're going to put it in F. So press F in the chat, comment F down below. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'll ha- that happens every couple of years. Someone has too much. Be another one. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, I mean, cause we use so much ammonium nitrate. Fertilizer. Globally, yeah. For blasting and fertilizer. And like, of course, then you, you build it's, so you got to like import it and like do ports and have stockpiles of it. And now, and then of course, then you build like cities around there and then you're like, oh, this is like, you know, feel free to, you know, in the comments, you know, feel free to, uh, look up where your, uh, your nearest ammonium nitrate stockpile is and how far you live from it. Um, consider moving. It, there's, 
There's one. Well, I mean, there's one in a lot of cities. Yeah. There's one in my city. I'm pretty sure there used to be. Oh my gosh. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just you know, like if they're safe, it's all good. But you know, if it starts burning down, it's not so good. Yeah. Anyway, not to be alarmist, but it's like it's it's literally a global problem. Now. Yeah. It's not going to solve, and it just. It's like it happens in the US, it happens in Lebanon, and it's like each time it's like, oh, how can this happen? What can possibly, you know? And it, and sure, it can definitely always be prevented, but it's like stuff which happens. Going to be next. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. even hear of so, farms. So exploding. for that F tier, like we had one in BC yeah, yeah, yeah. in the last couple of decades. There was like a farm exploded, so it was like they didn't even have that much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, not much to a farm is also like, yeah, I just had a ton. You know? <laughs> Only. Yeah, touche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tosyl azide, let's do tosyl azide. So tosyl azide's relatively safe. I think it's got a detonation temperature of around 120-ish. And so, you know, amongst azides, it's on the like more stable end. It's used in a lot of synthesis. Uh, you know, I still think it's a little bit uncool. Like, you know, you look at it and it's, it's just azide with a, you know, leaving group, but yeah. <laughs> So I think best case scenario, tosyl azide is probably going to be D tier. You want to talk yeah, no about... No complaints. Sorry? Yeah. That's right. No, yeah, yeah. there's no complaints from me. I can talk about TKX50. Perfect. Um, it's a, it's a uh, N-oxide, tetrazole N-oxide, um, which is fantastic. It's, it's, um, I, think it's, I think it's a very cool model. Oh, I think so too. Um, it looks like a bow tie. Oh, man, it's... Yeah, yeah, and and so it's 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 getting a bit of a bit of uh, notability around the place as sort of one of the one of the tetrazole ones that might actually break out of the lab. Um, oh, right on. Not that not that not that industry actually ever want to change their ways. I mean, if you're not careful, um, it'll break out of the lab ways. anyway. It'll break itself out of the lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I think oh, A or S tier. I'll leave that up. Oh, well, we can just put it in between. Does it look cool? Perfect. We'll put it, we in, put between. it in between. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> upset the viewers oh, i didn't a know bit. that was an option yeah there's, too, there's too many options now that upsets me yeah i mean what we could yeah. also do is we can cover up part of the letters for a couple compounds and then move it back after why don't we do that <laughs> just really upset right. people okay you want to <laughs> tell us about some of the c2n compounds yeah so i mean these are good ones that will never leave the lab and and that's that's good yeah, fair i mean this the c2n14 uh has to be oh uh, I, I want to put all of these in S tier. Actually, they're I, pretty cool. I, I do like. It. I really like these. They're ones pretty too. cool, and they are really good explosives. I mean, so the the TKX fifty, the CL, um, the TKX fifty, the CN, C two N fourteen, the C two N sixteen, all came from the same lab. Oh, really? Um, and they you know, so they're the Klapoke lab. Yeah, they 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 sort of try and corner that market of. Uh, <laughs> Very threateningly threatening tetrazole stuff, but uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic that they made the C two and fourteen a little while ago now, maybe a decade or so. But the longer. sixteen one's fairly um, recent. I mean, the six, but they but they keep pushing, you know. And the C two and sixteen came out came out this year, and I, I don't think there's been a lot of talk about it. Um, I mean, you know, compared to the C two and fourteen, which is talked about a lot. So for sure. Um, but but it's still uh, it's mighty mightily impressive. And I, I've I've got good word that it is a lot more uh, sensitive than the C two N fourteen. Wow, <laughs> it's um, which is saying a lot. I mean, the C two N fourteen, you know, was pretty sensitive, but was was handleable. But but the C two N sixteen is is um, you know, really on the limit of existing. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Similar in terms of barely existing, we have pentazenium and pentazolate. I believe both of these were developed by Carl Christie and co-workers, but I'm not 100% sure if anyone else had prepared them earlier. Uh, are you Are you sure, Tom? Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm not very good with history and names. Okay, but, fair um, enough. But but yeah, I mean, it's always because it's always a scale, right? Because you can you detect them, and you're like, oh, look, I got I got a peak on the mass spec, and you know, so we maybe made some in our ionization yeah. chamber. So oh, that's like the pentazolate. Yeah, yeah, it barely exists. Yeah, yeah. there. There's yeah, been but, a couple but that no, are but stable. now, yeah, exactly. But like, and then and then it keeps going, and you know, and there's been there's been some some salts and stuff, mostly out of China, and and it's been pretty impressive, um, you know. Yet to see it really break out into 
um, common use at uh, all. Well, uh, yeah, a way that's sort of nicely repeatable, shall we say? Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, so, so, but you know, these things are definitely possible, and 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 they said, you know, it was often thought that they weren't possible. I mean, they're all nitrogen. Um, that's impressive, ago. right? Like it's they're all nitrogen, right? Yeah. Like. And it, and it makes you think, like, what do we think now is impossible that people will just be kind of doing soon? Yeah, so, totally. I don't know. You're like, oh, it's six nitrogens. I mean, why not? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, hexanitrobenzene, it's or stupid. just like all nitrogens yeah. instead of the carbons. Yeah. Yeah. It's, e- it's easy to think, you know, like, oh, well, this time we're definitely at the limit of what's possible. And, you just know. Just keep pushing but, the envelope. Like, you never are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Um. So... But I think I think A tier, A tier oh, for the nah, B tier for the pentazelium. Okay. Because you know you got the ring. The ring adds some street cred. That's you know? yeah, that's true. I I was gonna briefly mention that Carl Christie's lab had tried to combine the pentazolium with with pentazolate to get a crystal Ooh, structure, yeah. but every time they did that, it just fully decomposed to nitrogen. Because it turns out you just have like an electron transfer from one to the other as soon as they are like being close proximity, because <laughs> they're all the same element, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, it's that's it's fantastic. A good idea, though. I like. I like oh yeah, that would be the coolest thing ever, right? Okay, yeah. why don't you tell us about xenon trioxide? I I love xenon trioxide. I mean, I haven't. I, this is one I haven't seen, um, and it's pretty rare. Um, and you do require the xenon tetrafluoride or the xenon hexafluoride as a precursor to make it. Um, and you know, so if anyone has, you know, a stockpile of either of those things, hit me up. Um, on Discord, um, <laughs> no one's gonna have that. Um, Someone will. I think. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and and there was this old video, I think from the fifties or something, where they de- they de- now it can't be from the fifties because it wasn't even invented in the fifties. Must have been from the late sixties, of course. Something like that. Um, where they de- they demonstrate some some xenon trioxide and, it, and they touch it with a leaf or something and it all detonates. Oh, that sounds awesome. I, I watched that like years ago and I've just been like, oh yeah, I can do that. I absolutely have not been able to do that. So. Fair enough. So I think S tier just for the allure. I think so. It's a xenon know. compound too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. So nitromethane. Nitromethane is kind of a lame one. Uh, it has a really cool flame. If you've seen Nile Red's video burning nitromethane with methanol, um, and while it says it's really explosive on Wikipedia, you know I haven't seen any good videos demonstrating the detonation of nitromethane because it seems pretty stubborn to get going. But I read that it's more explosive than TNT. It's just a matter of getting it started. That's the yeah. hard part. So yeah. I, I mean, so, I mean, the same goes with TNT. I mean, you can work with TNT all the time and never see it. Because it's just a, <laughs> it, it's just a secondary, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So I think so nitromethane is probably harsh. like E tier. E tier. It's not F tier. Yeah. It's got some oomph to yeah. it. Plus that like white flame. That white flame is like the coolest thing ever. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about DBX1? Uh, so, this is another tetrazole. Um, uh, so, I, I tried making it. I mean, I had a video. Oh, I have it? a video okay. on it, but I don't I don't um, think it's... I don't think I represented it very well, which is the usual story for most of my videos. Um, it's because occasionally, these days, I, I end up running into the people who make this sort of professionally and then they're like hey i watched a video and um oh really <laughs> you know you did you did badly oh that's funny <laughs> so i'm willing to accept this that's fine i mean you, when you make these compounds there's there's not many people in the world that know you've done wrong but yeah those couple of people know know you've done very badly um so for that i mean it's it's cool it's a copper one um and it's sort of a lead azide replacement well it's 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 trying to be a lead azide replacement um uh but it's it it has some annoyances about it so maybe b tier b tier b tier yeah it's just that's just i mean that's just more on a personal grudge i suppose fair enough what color is it it's red it's okay quite nice like a brick red very nice so i'll do uh benzene diazonium carboxylate or diazonium benzoate so these things are notoriously unstable for converting to benzines but you know a benzine isn't very happy either uh, I have accidentally isolated salts of these before, and I've even taken small amounts and tried burning them without any consequence. Oh. But I don't know about friction sensitivity or impact sensitivity, but, you know, I've I've also prepped these types of things on, like, 
30, 40 gram scales before. I think I've even done this on like a 100 gram scale before, but oh. I've, I've never had those isolated at that scale because that's terrifying. So, you know, it's kind of cool to Zwitter Ion, but if you compare that to like C2N16, who cares about this? Right to E tier. <laughs> <laughs> like, you tell me what's cooler, yeah. that or C2N16. It's like every day of the week, yeah, C2N16 is going to win. Yeah, for sure. What about the uh, Fulminates? Fulminates. Um, I mean, it's it's a classic. They're kind of like a, uh, I want to say retro, but it's like older than retro. It's like more like old timey. Okay. Kind of want like when you're making it, you kind of want to put on your buddy um old west, buddy outfit, cowboy and, boots, and go to like a, a settlement town and like you know, <laughs> I don't know, like Blow you up know, a ride a horse guy. or whatever the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic, and and I mean, it it looks really cool. It burns really cool, and if you, you, the reason you want to go back to those times is because you just don't know how bad mercury is. Oh yeah, totally. And if you don't know how bad mercury is, it's fun goes through the roof. You're like, this is great. Look at these <laughs> cool gray smears it's leaving around. Like you know, look at these cool metal balls. Like how fun is that? Oh yeah. Um, but in the in the modern day, it's it's like, hey, you know, I actually want to live to to see my senior years. Yeah. So <laughs> don't want to get Alzheimer's at forty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's it's fun, but it's not that fun. So I, I C tier. C tier. So we got three left. Uh, I'll do sodium azide. So sodium azide, it's pretty toxic. You know, it's got some street cred. You know, it's mm. got actual street cred because you know you get in a car accident that's on the street. So you know it's gonna <laughs> protect you from getting injured. Or you know if you get angry and you punch your um, airbag, I've, I know people who've had that just like explode and like break their nose before. I mean, if you compare this to the, like, C2N16, I keep thinking, like, if you look at what we have at S tier, they're just so much cooler than the sodium azide. Um, you know, we were pretty harsh on azide once already in tossel azide. I think we can keep them together in D tier. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're being harsh, but, it's, like, it's tough competition. You know, azide used to be cool, and now we've got, like, penazoles, and, you know, it's really slipping. It hasn't, it hasn't kept up with the times. Yeah. You know. It does make sodium vapor, which is pretty cool, because there's not many things that do that. But, you know, it's, mm. it's no mercury fulminate, that's for sure. <laughs> so we got our last two. So I actually haven't made either of these intentionally. You know, I know people do Tolan's test, and Tolan's test is notoriously famous for making silver nitride, if you're not careful. Nitrogen triiodide mm. is... It's, I think it's got more street cred than you might agree with, just because you can detonate it, I think, even with certain types of radiation, which is unique. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I, oh God, I want to test that claim out so bad. I do too. With the yeah. alpha radiation, Jesus. Oh. But like, that's a that's a whole nother discussion, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> and one that, what I mean, like, it's a discussion that starts with, is this legal for me to do? And it's like, no. It's like, okay, well. Okay. Where is it legal? But what if it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. But, um. Yeah, no, I, I, I love, I love triodide. I mean, it was like the first, one of the first, it was the first explosive I made. Oh, really? Right on. Um, and, and, um, the first sort of video I made, I think, for my channel. And I was like, come on, give it A tier. A tier? A tier. That was a bit harsh. Yeah, we can't talk good things about it and then give it fucking. B-tier. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you get the big purple plume when it explodes. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Silver nitride. Last but not least. Last maybe. Least, but not like, not least like IBX or benzotriazole. What do you think about silver nitride? Um, I mean, it's, it's scary and, and it is, you know, potentially one of the most sensitive ones I've ever made. Um, but it is annoying. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really have like a crystal structure and it sort of just comes out as like a black film or like a precipitate and it, you know, it feels much more like alchemy than it does actual real science. chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, don't get the black stuff. You know, that's the. It goes boom. The, you know, yeah, exactly. And you're like, well, what is it? And they're like, oh, it's just a random mix of of chemical. And you'd expect there to be some sort of scientific, like a really good, rigorous. But it's like, oh, nah, the silver and the nitrogen. You know, blah blah, whatever. It explodes. You're like, oh, that's shit. You know. I mean, so if you've worked <laughs> Is that a on a good dead explanation, end, yeah, I think it's fair enough. So, what do you yeah. think? C tier, B tier? Oh, uh, uh, 
D tier. D tier. I think I think on the same same level as Sony Mazide. Yeah, I think. Nah, that's it's C tier. C tier. C tier. C tier. Okay. Because at least at least it blows up. Yeah, it does. Right. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed this video with myself and Tom. It would really help out the channel if you <laughs> left a like and subscribed. And make sure you go check out Tom's channel, Explosions and Fire, and his second channel, Extractions and Ire. And I'll put links down to both of those uh, in the description. I hope you have a great day. Yeah, have have a have a fantastic day. I won't drag this out any longer. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great.